here this morning at Hope Church. We want to welcome you to Drive-In Church this morning. Again, we just remind everybody that this is the Resurrection Sunday morning service. Uh, we are happy to be Facebook Live as well as those who are present with us and coming in as we uh, come to glorify God and glorify this miraculous resurrection from the dead. We want to encourage you to uh, participate, worship, I know you're in an unusual circumstance of being inside your car, and we ask that you stay in your car this morning, but we want you just to feel free to worship the Lord while there. Turn on your radios to 88.5, and you'll be able to hear us clear, and uh, just be able to uh, enjoy, but yet, most importantly, be in agreement. For all of those on Facebook Live, welcome. Welcome. This is our 8 o'clock. We'll be pushing this out again at 10 a.m. this morning. Uh, following this service and so if you're watching now or in a just in a little while may the Lord bless you we're looking forward to hearing the results but most importantly seeing the results today of what he is going to do amen amen Lord we just thank you we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise we recognize that you are the resurrected son of the living God we thank you that you are here already in this place we give you praise 
we give you honor. We exalt your holy name, mighty, marvelous, majestic are you. And may everything that is said and done as those that have gathered, Lord, in your name, Lord, let it be, Lord, pleasing unto you. And let this day around the world, Lord, let this narrative, Lord God, of this miraculous resurrection, oh, hallelujah, that we celebrate every year, but Lord, yet we celebrate every day because it is our hope. It is our hope eternal that one day we will join you and we give you all the glory and the honor in your precious holy name. Amen. May the Spirit of the Lord Jesus be upon you today. Worship with us. Rid me of my 
God, just lift up his name. Oh, refine the King of Kings. Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. How we worship you, Lord. We glorify you. Lord, we just don't come to fill up an hour, Lord. We've come to stand in your presence. Your presence is not here, Lord. We don't want to be here. We want to be where you are. We want to do what you're blessing. It's not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit. And it is your spirit that we desire that fills this atmosphere, this place. We are so reminded that the church is not the building but it is the people in the church has gathered this morning to celebrate to honor to glorify your resurrection knowing that our hope is in this great miracle that you perform that after three days in a grave you rose thank you Oh, hallelujah, your son died. Hallelujah. Prior to his resurrection, he was, he was taken before and tried. He was beaten. He was bruised, the Bible says. It was by those stripes that he bore that provided healing for our bodies. It's the atonement sacrifice salvation of our soul is through the blood and the healing of our bodies is through the blood and many of you today are in need of a touch in your body here at hope we believe in divine healing i believe in divine healing and i believe this morning that as we pray this prayer of faith over those that are in need of a touch of a healing you will receive. I'm praying for expedient healing. Not delayed. Not hoped for. But today, let it be so. So if you're in need, whether watching us, or whether here present, I want you to lay a hand upon that area of your body that needs healing, needs the Lord's manifestation of the gifts of healing. Could you just say yes, Jesus? I believe and I'm in agreement with Pastor Bobby this morning as he prays this prayer of faith knowing that all authority was given and you have the power to heal. Because if that same spirit that raised you from the dead dwells in me. The word says that it will quicken my mortal body. Let it be so. Let it be so right now. I'm believing. As I'm receiving. Now will you elevate your hands to the Lord Jesus. In a time, it's just as a sign of surrender. Could you just give him thanksgiving? Could you be thankful this morning for what he not only did, but what he has done now, today? And by faith, would you say, yes, I believe that I have been touched by the Lord Jesus today, healed. And I receive today. I'm expecting great things to take place within me. And my body will respond to these prayers that are being offered in faith today. Oh, presently and around the globe, Jesus, you are still and forever will be the healer as you are Savior. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to you. 
Glory to your name. His presence is ever with us, but his presence is heavy upon us this morning. Oh, as we are here on this resurrection Sunday morning, standing in the sunlight. Hallelujah. Thank you for this gorgeous, glorious sunrise today. Oh, thank you, Lord, that we can worship together. Thank you, Lord, that we still have a voice in this nation. Thank you, Lord, that we uh, abide in this nation today. And we pray for America today. We pray that as this, this pandemic is spreading around this globe and across America today, that as the word is being spoken, there would be a stay on this plague. In agreement, I'm reminded of your word that says we have not because we ask not and we're asking for a stay on the spread of this disease. In Jesus' name, as the winds and the waves obeyed your word, may your word be spoken today around this nation to stay this disease. And let all glory and let all honor be unto you, Lord Jesus. For it is your word, your will, and your work that today we exalt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for coming. Grab your Bible, if you would, and be prepared to, to go with me in Scripture as we preach today and declare this gospel message that the Lord has laid upon my heart. I am praying for every pastor that is within our community and in the sound of my voice. I'm praying for you today. I'm praying for the anointing that breaks the yoke be upon you. I'm praying that today that everyone that hath ear, let them hear. I am praying that today, hallelujah, it is without a doubt that the Lord has been glorified. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're here today listening and you're here in our parking lot, give a quick shout out with your horn. Can you put a horn out there of an amen and a praise be to Jesus? Hallelujah. You're saying that our neighbors are not awake yet. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. For they hear us. May everyone that is tuned in to 88.5, again, I want to thank you for coming and being a part of this service. I'm going to take our text today from Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 10. I also take reference from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So both of those will be referenced today. I'm thankful for what has been made available as we come and preach this word to you at this 8 a.m. service. For those of you that have uh, uh, tuned in to us at 10 a.m., I know this is kind of strange to say that, at an earlier time, but this will be pushed back out at 10 a.m. to those that will be on Facebook Live at that time. We want to welcome you. But I'm going to speak to those that have arrived early today, and I'm going to speak to those that are up early today for just a few moments, and I will address those that drive in at 10 a.m. live here in our parking lot. Do you have a clue? Do you have a clue? I recall that quarantine was called something different in my childhood. I was reminiscing with my mother this morning as I was driving in, which I try to do every Sunday morning to speak with my, with my mom for a few moments. She's up early taking care of the animals, the pets that she so dearly loves, the, the, uh, the dogs, the cats, and the chickens. And we were talking about back in the day my childhood, we called it holidays. Holidays, we were gathered at my grandmother's house and we would come together and we would be there for several days. And, and uh, for those of you that may be watching in Houston, you'll uh, understand what I'm about to say, that often the weather was, well, pretty wet. And for a bunch of country boys that were coming into town, we, uh, we liked to be outside, we couldn't be outside, so we were quarantined inside the house for the holidays. And while we were inside the house, uh, we had to come up with something to do. We didn't have each other uh, having our own individual devices in our hands. We call telephones today. Well, we call them telephones in. Now we just call them phones, right? And uh, 
Back then, the phone had a long cord, longer than our uh, snake that's wandering from the stage to the back out in the parking lot today. And uh, we would uh, be so thankful that my Uncle Jerry and Aunt Glenda would, uh, would bring, uh, as one of those gifts that they would bring uh, for the family was a, was a game of some sort. We all knew it was a game, a board game. We just didn't know which one it was until we unwrapped it in the holidays of Christmas. And we'd unwrap it and we were so thankful because that's what we did around the tables and around the, the company of our family in quarantine, if you would. So many of you have tried the same uh, adventure, learning how to play board games, learning how to play games with your family. I would mention cards, but in that time, you, you, uh, that was uh, frowned upon. Now we use them because, well, we just do. Matter of fact, uh, uh, we're televangelists today and many people are watching uh, 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 their share of movies and all of that was another story back in the day. But one of those games was called Clue. So I thought about that game and I thought that the game Clue just, just kind of went with today's message. So that's where the title came from. Do you have a clue? You see, today is Sunday. I know you know that. It's another week has come and a new one has begun. Many of you are marking them on the days of the calendar. How many days you've been quarantined? How many days you have not been physically at work? How many days you haven't been in a classroom? How many days you haven't uh, daily and routinely gone into a grocery store? But unlike the past several Sundays that we've met in this extraordinary measure of parking lot church, this particular t Sunday has a special place in our hearts as believers, as believers. This is a Sunday we've set aside to especially remember the hope of humanity. The belief that if Christ resurrected from the dead on the third day of being secured in the grave. Then we who confess him as Savior, according to Romans 10, 9, and serve him as Lord, according to Colossians 3, 22, we would also rise from the grave on the glorious day of his second coming, according to 1 Thessalonians 1, 16. Now, there are two ways that we can enter into eternity. One is by way of the grave, and one is by way of the trumpet blast. I'm good either way, for my hope is in Christ Jesus, and I believe what I just stated, that because of His resurrection, I can believe I can be resurrected. Do you have a clue, though, that the resurrection is more than just the holiday called Easter, a day of worship, mass, bonnets, Easter, and family. That the word resurrection has such a powerful concept that we need to unpackage, if you would. It's like taking one of those plastic eggs that some of you may have or that you had to go Google on the internet to learn how to re-dye uh, eggs, not not re-dye them after you dye them, but some of you have forgotten how to dye a boiled egg or let alone how, how to boil an egg. Well, I can't go through that. Maybe I should have taken an object lesson and taught us all how to boil an egg today and how to dye one. But I want to take a moment. Can you think about that plastic egg that so many of us are accustomed to, to putting some sort of a chocolate or a treat in and hiding it for the kids and, and then we pick them back up? Can we Break one open today in a multiple ways and just talk about the word resurrection and see what it really means to us so that by the time we end this sermon, we'll all have a clue. We'll all have a clue. First of all, it's resurrection power. Resurrection power. The enemy is defeated. The enemy is defeated. Let's see what the book God's holy word, the Bible says regarding the resurrection. Because I want to know how can I be assured that death, its finality, doesn't have sting, doesn't come and bring the, the, the loss that it is so accustomed to being attached to it. Because I believe it's true that most of us, well, we have this... Uh, we have this desire to arrive at death safely. 
I love the, the quote, and I, I don't have it in its an exact form, but Mark Batterson says it so well that we try to arrive at death safely. Matter of fact, I don't have a quote for this. I'm just saying it. I believe most of us are pushing it as far off as we possibly can from this present day because death is final. Death is it's over. Once you're in the grave, you're in the grave. So there's a little bit of a anxiety, a fear that is attached to the knowledge of what death brings. But I want to remind you because of resurrection and the power of resurrection that we can have hope. Could you go with me to 1 Corinthians 15, 54 first? There's a promise there and I want to take it and read it from the voice. It will be as scripture says, and that's where the absolute comes from, scripture. If scripture says it, I believe it. I believe in the word of God. For the word of God is the word, is, the, is, is God, as John 1, 1 declares. It says it will be as scripture says, life everlasting has victoriously swallowed death. That's why I chose it in the, the voice, because it has victoriously swallowed death. Oh, I need to take it a little further and read the entirety of verse 54. And when we are all redressed with bodies that do not, cannot decay, when we put immortality over our mortal frames, then it will be as scripture says, life everlasting has victoriously swallowed death. I like this. Hey, death. Hey, death. Where is your big win? Hey, death, what happened to your sting? Yes, our hope is eternal. Our promise is guaranteed by his authority given him. You see, Matthew emphasizes this theme quite often throughout the gospel. Jesus repeatedly demonstrated his authority, his authority over all things, the human body, demons, natural elements such as wind and water the sabbath sin and even death our true hope is to be free from physical death just as jesus was raised from the dead and death was defeated because of resurrection power let's go and break it down one more it's resurrection provided resurrection provided the victor was declared not only was death defeated but there was a victor over over death over the enemy matthew 28 our text 1 through 10 I, I i need to read it all so would you bear with me would you read along with me now after the sabbath toward the dawn of the first day of the week mary magdalene and the other mary went to see the tomb and behold there was a great earthquake for an angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it and for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men but the angel said to the woman hear this do not be afraid for i know that you seek jesus who was crucified he is not here, for he has risen, as he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. It's a different kind of fear. But yet still in that astonishment, they ran to tell his disciples and behold, Jesus met them and said, I love this. Jesus met them and said, greetings, greetings, a proof of his resurrections as he met them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped them. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. I need, to, I need to remind you that it is good to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that as Americans, 
those of us that live in the United States of America, especially those that especially that specifically live in the Bible Belt. We're pretty good at celebrating worship in the Lord Jesus on the day of resurrection. There's a lot of worship that goes on, a lot of emphasis on the worship of the Lord Jesus. But the Holy Spirit showed me that that was only one sentence in this entirety of declaring his resurrection. But quickly, after they worship, he said, get up and go. He said, now that you've seen me alive, do something with it. And that's my, that's my voice to you today. Because I believe, and this is just what the Holy Spirit dropped into my heart, that on this particular Resurrection Sunday, because of all the uniqueness of the presentation of the gospel, yes, there will be some unsaved, non-Christians to tune in or to attend a, an unusual ambiance, if you would, of a drive-in church. To go to great lengths and measures to go hear the gospel. But I believe for the most part it's going to be believers today. You're going to come. You're going to do what you always have done and do it to the best of your ability. You're going to worship the Lord Jesus on the day of resurrection. And I applaud you for that and I encourage you to do so. For great is our God and great to be praised. But quickly he turned the page in this narrative and said go and tell so if resurrection had power and resurrection was provided then I must I must break open this, this egg if you would and have you see that resurrection was preached resurrection the news was to be declared 1 Corinthians 5, 57 through 58, I read in the, from the ESV. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And how did that victory come about? It came about through his victory of resurrection. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Did you hear that? Beloved brothers, believers, those who say, yes, I recognize he is the resurrected son of God. He says, be steadfast. He says, be immovable. And he says, always abound in what? The work of the Lord. The work of the Lord. While the day is still upon us, we must be busy Doing the work of the Lord. It says knowing that the Lord. Your labor is not in vain. Knowing that in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain. I speak to all of those that are listening this morning. That you're trying with, with just, a, just a chaotic thought process. Of how will my voice matter? How will I get it out there? What will I say? Let me, let me tell you, I've struggled with the same. I understand the challenges that come about in this particular moment in history of how to proclaim and declare the gospel. And what is it that the Holy Spirit, see that's the most important, what is it the Holy Spirit wants you to say? Not what other people are saying and other people are doing, but what has he called you to do and you to declare? And he says to know that that work will not be done in vain if you're doing it according to his will. And his will is to do it. This practical application of doing the work of the Lord is for the doctrine of resurrection is, is if you would, evangelism. That we as Christians will do for the kingdom of God, we will set fruitfulness, that there would be reproduction, that there would be a harvest of souls. 
on this resurrection Sunday. Yes, let's celebrate. Yes, let's worship. Let's sing. Let's rejoice that Jesus is not in a tomb. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. But He's alive. And He turns the page and tells you now that you believe this. Now that you know this. Now that you've accepted this. Now that you've confessed this. Now, go do something with it. During this pandemic, we are still responsible to go tell not stay talk. Go tell. Don't stay talk. I believe too many believers and Christians are now staying in their homes just to talk about it. And to talk to other people of like faith because you're comfortable with them. You just talk about it. Don't talk about it. It's time to do something. Our message is to be clear. Is to be articulated of this event that changed history and it changed the future. Because death is not the final word. As I was reading my devotional this week of Live Dead Joy, Dick Brogdon said this, Resurrection life means there is something for us on the other side of sorrow. And sin causes anguish. Yet Jesus exhorts us to wreath in hope. And this hope, and this hope that we have is that when sin brings sorrow, we know that His resurrection brings life. His resurrection brings hope. His resurrection brings joy. And people need to hear this. People need to hear this. Today, not tomorrow. Today. Because we are not promised tomorrow. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. 28. You, you recognize that I'm still in the same text? Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. This is more than just go preach. This is to now take it to a whole other level and make disciples. I don't know how to make a disciple. It's time to learn how to make a disciple. It's turn time to learn how to be a disciple to make a disciple baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to observe all things i i command you observe all things that are found in the written word all things that have been commanded and given and laid out could it be that we are here where we are today and experiencing what we're experiencing because somebody has not adhered to or followed the commands of the Lord or as a whole, as a nation. Have we sinned? I call to our nation to repent. And let it begin with me. Let it begin with us. Let us take on the, and follow in the footsteps of the prophets of old. We see Jeremiah weeping for his people. Have you weeped for those who are in sorrow? Have you weeped for those that have no hope? Are you weeping for those who are trying to dig themselves out of a grave because they're not ready to die because death is such a finality? Do you have a clue that the resurrection is more than just an opportunity to experience the pleasure of a special Sunday service? To worship the risen, the risen Christ? To desperately try to keep the dirt off ourselves and being six feet under? Have you ever considered that these words that I just read, which we know is called the Great Commission, are the words that follow the resurrection story of our Lord Jesus Christ. So often these are divided up into two separate messages and not often on the same day. But let me be today the one. And I pray that as I, I listen to the voice of the Lord, I'm speaking as He directs me today, is that the resurrection power, the resurrection provided, the resurrection preached, they go together. In the course of hearing, we must be obedient because his resurrection, he says, is proof, is proof. And he has given this 
proof to us and that he would extend authority to us to empower us to be a witness as Acts 1.8 declares. Let me just throw a couple of questions in here. Would it not be true that the threat of death would hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God? I'm going to answer that for myself. I believe so. If you were at threat of dying for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, I believe that some of us, if not most of us, would shy away from sharing the gospel. I pray that there is such a boldness that comes upon us. No, you know how that boldness comes upon us? The boldness comes within us through the empowering of the Holy Ghost and the fire that accompanies to speak the Word of God, to declare the Word of God. What could we do for the kingdom of God if we are not afraid of dying? What could we do? I'm not saying drop the guidelines. I have encouraged you to follow the guidelines that have been set for the safety and, and, and for the for the uh, uh, just the, the, the living of every day. Yes, do this. But the Holy Spirit will empower you and enable you and creatively give you ways to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you need to do so. Every one of us, we're, we're a part of the family of God who are followers of God. And as a family member, you, have, you are a member of that body. And each member has a different function. Each member has a different way of, a, of, a, of just reaching out to the, your particular world. Matthew 28, 17 through 18. It says, when they saw him, they worshipped him. I keep going back here because I want to bring this into our final point. They, they said simply this. They, they worshipped him. And some did doubt. But immediately Jesus came and said to them, all authority has been in heaven and earth has been given to me. Why was he saying all authority had been given to him? Because he said, I want to transfer this authority to you to go in my name and by the blood that I shed. So the final egg that we break open is resurrection prepared. Are you prepared? Are you prepared to preach what has been provided the power of resurrection there's a reward that is distributed Romans 8 11 I quote this so often and this is the verse that has led to this particular Sunday as we have begun to prepare over 40 days ago for this miraculous Sunday this resurrection Sunday of 2020 Romans 8, 11, but if the same spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you prepared to live by dying to self? Are you prepared to give your life in service and in work for the kingdom as Christ Jesus modeled? John 12, 23 through 28. I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat is planted in the ground and dies, it remains a solitary seed. But when it is planted, it produces the death of a, gr a great harvest. The one who live, loves this life will lose it. And the one who despises this world will have life evermore. Anyone who serves me must follow my path and anyone who serves me will want to be where I am and he will be honored by the Father. My spirit is low and unsettled. How can I ask the Father to save me from this hour? This hour is the purpose for which I have come into the world. Can that not be the t-shirt we wear right now? This hour is the purpose for which I have come into the world. I have been born at the right time. I have been born for today. You have been born at the right time. You have been born for today. But what can I, but how, what I can say is this, Father glorify your name. Suddenly a voice echoed from the heavens, the Father 
I have glorified my name. And again, I will bring glory in this hour that will resound throughout time. You know, I close with this final illustration. And, and I want you to know I'm a part of it. Okay, I'm a part of it. Being prepared for a pandemic was not something that we all entered into 2020 with. And I know that there's been a run on chickens because there was a run on eggs. And I know that there has been a, a run down to the, they say that one of the most popular things that is being done right now, and I see and witness neighbors putting up raised gardens. People going to the feed stores and getting seed. People going out, I saw a sign the other day, cows for sale. They had plenty of them, so you can have a cow. I know that one of my small bunch of cows, one of them looked at the other and said, if you got to eat one, eat that one first. You see, we weren't prepared for some of the scarceness of, of supplies that we so easily have obtained in the past. But I want you to know that we have been warned. And so there's many that are starting to uh, prepare for what may be the future in the new way of life of living with chickens and getting go gathering our eggs, uh, living with a cow, even some of us learning how to milk a cow so we can have milk that we so enjoy with our cereal. That's what milk's for, right? Cereal. But what, you know, when, when, when Corona happened, some were not prepared. There's been a scurry even to find masks and, and gloves and, and disinfectants and Clorox wipes. If you have any of those, we could, you know, we can make a bundle. We could do all kinds of things for the kingdom of God with what we could raise on that fundraiser. But I want I want you under the same uh, uh, just a thought process of preparedness. Are you prepared that when the rapture happens, you see, you can't scurry around. You, you can't get ready for something when it happens as the scripture declares in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. We got work to do. There are people that are unprepared. And you know, just like others who are saying, hey, this could be a problem. And you need to get prepared for it. And I've watched even believers do this. And if this is a little offensive, I apologize, but it's the truth. That we've just kind of waved our hand, turned the other cheek, said, you know, this is just, you know, this is fake. This is not true. And the Holy Spirit says this is the same thing that others out there, when you're wanting to tell them the truth of the coming of the Lord Jesus, they're going, nah, nah, that's just a myth. That's a fable. I don't really believe that. I had a come to Jesus meeting with myself and the Holy Spirit. And he says, I want you to take a good look at this. And I want you to begin to declare and preach and prepare people for my coming. Because I'm coming. As soon as the Father says go, I'm going to get my bride. And people aren't prepared. And just as in the days of Noah, they're not all going to listen to you. And some of them may ridicule you. Some of them may spit upon you. Some of them may curse you. And by the way, that's exactly what they did to Jesus when he hung up on the tree. Do you have a clue that the resurrection is more than just Jesus being alive? It's proof that we do not have to fear death. So take this home with you. Because he lives, I can live. And no power on earth can distract me from my commission to tell everyone we win. We win if we follow him to the cross. We win if we die to self. We win and live victoriously in the full assurance of the resurrection. Because if he was resurrected, I can be resurrected. So we need today, as I close in with this altar call, to fully surrender. Fully commit to the Lord today. And that means obeying his commands, even the un, in unfavorable conditions. You always just wanted to quote this verse for preachers. 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word. 
and be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I submit to you, we're all preachers. And we need to preach the word. Even in conditions that are unfavorable. Even in conditions and seasons that are not convenient. Even when they are un when, when we feel like people will not listen and we don't have a voice. We need to preach the word. The leader of Global Prayer Alliance. An upper room. Call to the believers says this. As he sent a letter out to the pastors this week, and I couldn't help but put it in prior to my prayer. He says, Be a modern day Joshua. Keep his word in your mouth, Joshua chapter 1. Be strong and very courageous. You will make it, you will conquer the land, and you will lead your people in these challenging days to the promised land with great victory. The crucifixion landscape 2,000 years ago was a bloody mess with humiliation and pain at the forefront. But that was also the very landscape where the greatest ministry of all times was launched through his death and resurrection. The current virus, this mess has that derailed you and the church from our normal way of doing ministry will also be the landscape from where some of the newest ministries and the greatest ministries will emerge. Stand strong, for you are a winner no matter what the enemy throws at you. If Christ abides in you and you in him, would you bow your heads? I'm looking to those that are in our audience of cars, I'm looking to those in our audience on Facebook Live, and I am saying today that be a modern day Joshua. If you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, today is your day of salvation. If you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior, today I call upon you to believe that He truly is the resurrected Son of God and confess your sins. And accept him into your heart today and turn from your way of sin turn from your way of disobedience turn from your way that you have been living and live in the way of Jesus Christ pray this simple prayer with me right now Heavenly Father I thank you for your son Jesus and I accept him into my life as your son your living son I believe you have given him authority to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of unrighteousness. So as I confess you, Lord Jesus, today I pray that you forgive me. Come into my life. Make my life new. I commit to you fully to live a new life in you and to obey your commands and to be a modern day Joshua and preach your word as I learn your word. And I thank you for my new life today in you. If you prayed this prayer and there was a life transformation moment, you would know that. You would know if your life is new. You know the sincerity of your prayer. And I want you to send it to myhope.tv. Send a message or text me. My number is on our website. Send it through the Facebook Live. Let us know that you've made this decision so that we can begin to disciple you so that you can then in turn make disciples. If you are a disciple of Jesus, you're here today and or you are watching, I want to declare to you that this is your day. As we read earlier in Scripture, in Scripture, this is the hour, this is the hour, this is the hour of my purpose that I have come into the world. And say, I don't know maybe what it is or I do know what it is. Maybe you've been struggling with it. Maybe you've been talking to someone and saying, this is what I should do. This is how I should do it. I know to do it, but there's just something holding you back. May the power of the Holy Spirit come within you. Stir up the gift that is within you and speak the word with boldness. If it's on the Facebook Live, it's just on YouTube, or if it's getting out, we need more street preachers. 
We need more people who are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't say, why me? Say, what did you create me for? I declare today over you an anointing in the Jesus name and by his blood and by the power of resurrection, by the victory that reigned over and through resurrection, by the word that is to be declared of resurrection and being prepared to speak of resurrection. I send you forth to go. May your mission field be the field that you put your speed upon this week. Starting right now. In Jesus name. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Strong shall be broken. You wear the 
Jesus is awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thankful that you've come today. For those that are with us here in this parking lot, those that are with us on Facebook Live, we encourage everyone to share this. This is a great tool, a great way for each of us to get the voice out to those that are friends, because that's who's on your Facebook. Share this message. We always want to give you an opportunity to to return to the Lord. So as you leave today, I, I will be uh, standing at the exit and I want to just have an opportunity to wave and to see your smiling face as you leave out. And there's enough place for you to stop if you uh, plan to give and return your tithe and your offerings to the Lord. And uh, we'll do it in a safe and uh, precautious way so that everyone leaves here uh, in good shape, in good shape. If you are at home and you'd like to uh, uh, just bless this ministry and bless what God's doing, you can do that through our website. You can do that online and uh, as well as you can text it. We thank you so much for being with us. May the Lord Jesus bless you. May his face shine upon you. And may he go before you today and, and show you things that you've yet to see. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Remember, everyone, stay in your cars. And as you exit, would you just... Uh, would you just know that we're going to bless you as you leave out? Hallelujah.